Chapter 32. We march. Darkness covers the long, winding road. The headlights of the guards' bicycles throw yellow shadows on the little white houses scattered along the mountainside, a sleepy, peaceful village surrounded by tall, majestic mountains. Our wooden shoes pound against the pebbles on the narrow road. Hidden by the night, we move quickly without speaking. The beauty of the surroundings, the peace of the sleeping inhabitants, must not be disturbed. Even the guard commands and subdued, March, march, faster! The walk is long. The wooden shoes feel strange and uncomfortable. The harsh canvas rubs my skin. I feel blisters on my feet. I wish I could walk without the shoes, but the road is full of sharp pebbles. I see others limping. One girl tries to get the shoes off her sore feet, and a guard's club nearly hits her head. Don't be so delicate, Jew. You'll learn to walk in those shoes. March faster! The guard rides away on her bicycle. The blisters on my feet burn like fire. I bite my lips and march. From the distance, a row of low buildings becomes visible in the early morning light. We march toward the buildings. I strain my eyes to see. No chimneys. Halt! Line up! Five rows! Fast! The lines move quickly forward. We march past rows of neatly parked bicycles, gleaming in the morning sun. We are inside. The building is clean and brightly lit. Rows and rows of machinery and work tables with different metal objects fill the huge room. It looks like some sort of factory. I hear someone whisper. Some of the girls are standing by machines. Instructors show them how to use the machines. I hear the shrill sounds of electrical drills. Small metal parts are put under the drills. How can I work an electric machine? I cannot see well without glasses. Will they send me to Gross Rosen? Come forward, please. An instructor points to me. I move toward him. This is a drill, he says, an electric drill. You put the metal part under the drill, check to make sure it is in place, press the switch. The drill does the rest. It must fit perfectly. He looks at me for a second. Be very careful with this machine. Now try it. I move closer to the work table. I stretch myself to reach the machine. I can hardly make it. He watches me, grinning. How old are you, girl? Eighteen. My voice trembles. He suddenly, he studies my face carefully. Eighteen. <laughs> You're so small, so skinny. You look more like fifteen. I'm eighteen, sir. I really am. Well, maybe, but you cannot reach this machine, girl. You cannot work here. Sorry. He shrugs his shoulders. Sorry. The guard quickly orders me to join a group of girls standing in the corner, rejects like me. For a short moment, I feel relief. They don't know about my eyes. March, march, the guard points to a door at the end of the hall. March! The door opens. Before us lies a dark tunnel. Gas lights hang from the clay walls, throwing the yellowish shadows. We step into the damp and muddy tunnel. Pails and shovels stand against the wall. Take the pails and shovels and move forward. A man's voice, speaking broken German, reaches us from inside the tunnel. I cannot see him. I can hardly see the girls near me. We move slowly forward. The clay sticks to the wooden shoes. It's cold, wet, and dark all around us. Halt! Stay where you are. We stop and wait. Girls, I am a Frenchman, a slave laborer. We are building here an underground shelter for the Germans to hide from bombs. There is a deep resentment in his voice. My comrades and I do the digging. You fill the buckets with the clay and pass them from one to another. The last one in this chain will take them outside. He stops. Be brave, mademoiselles. He starts to hum the Marseillaise, the national anthem of France, the song of resistance. His comrades join in. I know the Yiddish words to it, and I hum along.